let's start the show for the week. Now, this is going to be deep, deep Microsoft talk. We're going to be starting on a specific Twitter thread that I scalpeled from Steven Totillo specifically. There's going to be a couple things where we can't really dig deeper. There wasn't really a point of doing a write-up. So we're going to be reading from this kind of Twitter thread that he pieced together. Then we're going to go to my write-up about the entire situation around the FTC that happened today. We're going to have a great time. Now, it's a lot here. Starting with the first. So among the exhibits Microsoft and Activision want to use in their defense against the FTC, three including Activision executives discussing Steam, Nintendo, and Game Pass cannibalization of sales. Very interesting. I'm sure no one is shocked when you hear Game Pass cannibalizing sales. Of course, it cannibalizes sale because it's Netflix. So like, why, why buy the DVD when I think it's going to come to Netflix in two months, right? It's the similar thing we all went through with Netflix. The exact same thing we hear now. I don't know if you want to quickly add to this, Ruben, before I move on. I am sorry. I did not hear anything you said. I just saw the first uh, thing of Stephen Totillo's the thread, and it's the the headline for the first <laughs> is just insane. I'm sorry. What did you say? No, you're good. You're good. So pretty much the first part of this is Game Pass ca- cannibalization of sales, right? Oh, yeah. Yes. Which not shocking. makes sense. But no, of course, not shocking at all. You got to do what you got to do. Of course. And and Game Pass, although I'm sure makes them money, you are eating money in the back end because your games aren't going to sell as much. Exactly. Let's see here. That's not important. Activision executive review of Stadia. So there was a, a full on review email attachment of Stadia that they probably um, are going to fully read. Of course, a lot of this is redacted and we can't actually see this, but we're able to see the exhibit title. So that's always interesting. Um, there's a 2020 Microsoft email uh, called multiple stores on Xbox. Very interesting what that means. Now, that could be something incredibly trite, like movies, TV shows and games being technically different stores, but it's being used in this specific exhibit. It's being used as legal information, meaning it has got something juicy in there. Of course, we've always discussed that Game Pass could exist on other platforms like PlayStation yeah. and Nintendo. I'm curious if this was a strategy to try and get another bigger company or publisher onto your platform to sell stuff. Uh, this is pretty funny. Uh, some sort of 2019 forward to Xbox executive replied, quote, pettiness from Sony and GameSpot's fanboy reviewers, That's end quote. Crazy. <laughs> That's what I was like, fat, like so caught off guard. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Mostly the GameSpot's, pe- the GameSpot reviewers. Yeah. Is what caught me off guard. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's what we're doing. So, and what's funny is, Totillo adds, not sure what the deal was with GameSpot, but they did give Gears 5 a 7 earlier that month. Which I I, w- I would say I they are okay, hold on. Back let me back up before I say what I was gonna say. I'll word this a little bit more intricately. They are still human, so I don't blame them for being angry about that. It is pretty funny that they called GameSpot <laughs> reviewers fanboys. Fan that, is <laughs> that is very funny. I think what it is for me, it's Gears 5, Halo Infinite, they're the same. Well, let me not say Halo Ooh, Infinite. I was about Gears to say, what five, are we doing here? Gears 5, Halo 5, you can look back at the first games. Okay. Uh, Gears 1 and Halo 1, they're the same game. Mm, okay. So, like, it, I dropped off Gears 5. I, only, I think I only played Gears 3. I dropped off. Uh, yeah, it was a fun time. Did I want to play Gears of War 4? No, I didn't because I already played the game, you know? Like, there's nothing more appealing to coming back to it. Now, I will say, you know, God of War 2018 and God of War Ragnarok, yes, they're the same game. Uh, you uh, Uncharted 1 through 4, yeah, they're the same game, but it's the story that brings me back. Final Fantasy, I can't really say Final Fantasy is the same game, but there's nothing driving me to to play Gears 5. There's no story that looks insane mm. that I want to go back to playing Gears 5. So, 
That's all I'll say. I do. Of course, you are your own person, but that does shock me a bit saying how down you are in Gears 5. And I think you're not the only person. I don't think people very much like Gears 5. I actually adored Gears 5 specifically. There's a couple aspects narratively I would actually dock it um, if I was mm. actually like a reviewer. A 7 does seem a bit low for me. I'm not a big review score guy, so I don't necessarily care. Uh, just to give a bit context, um, the original writer of the Gears 5 review was Phil Hornshaw. I have no idea who that is. I don't know if he is quote unquote a fanboy. I would doubt that if he is a paid reviewer of a major website, but I do not know the man, so I'm not going to pretend like I can judge either way what he is. To add, um, go, go ahead. I was just going to say, the, the kind of lines up, the highest I see here uh, on Open Critic, IGN gave it a 9 out of 10, PC Gamer gave it a 78 out of 100, uh, Easy <laughs> Allies 8 out of 10, Games Radar Plus 4 out of 5, Came Informer eight point five out of ten. Okay, so that yeah. but that so they are the lowest though. Everyone you named is almost pretty much, uh, yeah, pretty but much is higher than that. It's not just Gamespot that gave him a, a seven out of ten. Of Metro course, Game Central, PC Gamer technically counts as it's a technically. Yeah, I agree, very close to an eighty. Again, I'm I. When we get to numbers, it's so annoying when we have to like, yeah. oh, this is not a seven. It's an eight. I hate it. It's annoying. Wish we could just talk about games, but that's not the reality we live in. So I'll quickly add that. Although weird that they gave it a seven, it is their prerogative. I understand if they don't like GameSpot. I mean, if I released a game and I thought it was a nine and someone gave it a seven, I'd be mad too. Should you be doing right. that in official company emails? That's pretty no, bold of you. Probably pretty bold. Not. Pretty yeah. bold. <laughs> yeah. Now. Can you say that in the contents? Sure. Do you put that in the forward? That's probably no. where, where you messed up. Probably don't put that. I in wouldn't. Need, I would probably go as far as to say as yeah. Probably don't call a, a, a review a, a place that reviews your games fanboys <laughs> in company emails, company yeah. phones. No, you say that in to somebody's face. Yeah, you don't just say in that. confidence, be like, hey, yeah. Did you see that review? Bullshit. Also, I will add. People sleep in on Gear 6. I understand you don't like it, so you're fine. But that was a very good game. It was very good. Give it whatever score you want. I don't care. I'm just saying other people should try it. I feel like that was kind of slept on as Gear 6. Gears 5 also. Those are two okay. good games. I, I, I hate that people don't very much like them. Now, up, but, of course, I don't blame them. It's not that I don't like them. It's just that, like I said, there was nothing pulling me back into the story mm, to okay. play them. Gears That's 4, true. 5, or 6. That's true. That's true. I, I, I guess... I would have to replay them, but yeah, they don't do anything entirely new narratively. Gear six does, but you have to beat the game to to know that. Right. Uh, let's see here. Follow up on da, 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 from uh, that's probably nothing. May twenty twenty two email from Phil Spencer to Jim Ryan reply. Follow up on content discussions, and there's another in August. Interesting on what that is. I'm trying to think of the time frame. That could have just been more Activision Blizzard stuff. Uh, to yeah. further cement, hey, by the way, uh, we're going to put it there. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal, etc. Yeah. So the the second one from uh, 826, 2022, it says, uh, uh, Microsoft's commitment to Activision games on PlayStation post-merger. So yeah, Yes, I see that. I see that right here. Yeah. Yep. December 2022 email replied, Xbox Game Stores to Switch. Studios. Xbox oh, I'm sorry. Studios. Why did I say? Titles. What did I? Did I say stores? You did say stores. Jesus Christ. I think that's what you also said before. What is it really? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Xbox game stores. <laughs> also, one in January 23. Xbox game studios. There you go. Titles to PlayStation and Switch. This is something that I've always theorized that might be the end game to Microsoft. Slash Phil Spencer slash, you know, whoever you want to point to. Yeah, I think the win is get PlayStation or sorry, get Game Pass on PlayStation, get Game Pass on Switch. I think that is the I imagine the end go the end goal breaks all barriers. Make sure all your games are going everywhere and you get to reap the benefits of. Uh, over 100 million people, if you're on both platforms, like that's a lot of ice on all your stuff, so. This is interesting because most people would go to, yeah, get Game Pass on Switch, get Game Pass on PlayStation. I see it as 
we already put Minecraft on Switch. We already put Minecraft on PlayStation. Right. Why don't we just do it with the rest of our games? Mm. Get Halo 5. Or Halo Halo's a bad one. But <laughs> Avowed. Yeah. Let's put it on PlayStation. You do Let's lose your leverage. Yeah, you, but you don't want the cut. You want your you want the subscription service. They don't care about the money from the game. They want the money coming out of your wallet every month. Right, but at the same time, like you said before, when we were talking about Game Pass subscriptions, like yeah, right. they're losing money. They could have sold this game at seventy bucks, but you're getting it at fifteen ninety nine. Right. So like this is potentially a way to offset the costs or mm-hmm. offset the the you know get more gains. I and Which there I was always see. there was always rumors that they actually tried to get the Master Chief collection on PlayStation. Yeah. Um I've only heard <laughs> that specific rumor. I haven't heard any other details why it fell through, what you know what what they wanted, but I don't I don't you're not saying anything wrong. Like I agree with your general thought process. The only thing yeah. I would add is the reason they can't do that is they want Game Pass. Once they give you no. the game, they've lost the reason to put Game you Pass. You are absolute. You are absolutely right. You are absolutely okay. right. And I think, especially for the Master Chief Collection, I think that's the only one that they would probably do because Sony f- focuses so heavily on story. Yeah. Yeah. The Halo Master Chief Collection has a story, but it, it's it's really a shooter. So we yeah, should people want put the a shoot exactly, which would be so interesting. Often. It would be very interesting. It, that's why I I would love to know. Those, there's no yes. way for me to know, but I would love to talk to Phil and be like, "What's yeah. the what's the ten year plan?" You know, they they love execs love that term. What's the ten year plan? What's your five year plan? You know, mm-hmm. what do you want to see? Oh, they love it. They love talking about it. I'm very very curious. I imagine the ten year plan is Game Pass is like fifteen bucks a month, and we're on every platform like. I imagine it's somewhere in that space. I I know they wanted um there was uh oh my god, how did we know this? There was like a rumor or something a long time ago that they wanted Xbox Live on on Switch and they kind of yeah. do sort of with Minecraft kind of, but like not really. Uh, I could totally see Game Pass going to Switch. And it will happen to Switch like... before PlayStation. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. But Nintendo's like, all right, we'll we'll do this, but you guys have to help us fix our online. Yeah, I could definitely see a you know scratch my back, I scratch yours because yeah, yeah, it is shocking that Nintendo still has that bad of an online. Like it's pretty, that's pretty shocking for a company that it, values it's... their products so highly. Like I played Tears of the Kingdom, I didn't encounter one single bug. I'm gonna say that again. 2023 i played a video game that was brand new without a single bug not one not a single time did the game act up in any way i didn't fall through the earth i didn't you know jump and it launched me in the air nothing yeah but they don't care Um, about their online that's so weird i think nintendo sees themselves as a, a company that yeah we have online but we don't focus on it yeah yeah, most of our games, Pokemon is the one uh, I think of the most. Yeah, Pokemon has online functionality, but this is a game where you play on the couch. Like yeah, you, you're yeah. you're not playing online. You're playing on the couch. You're you're doing it. It's kind of the Sony thing where we focus on single player story game. Well, single pl- single player games. We don't focus on multiplayer online. It's pretty much everything from the thread that we we could cover. Uh, of course, the most interesting tidbit being that Xbox Game uh, Studios on other platforms, Xbox Game Stores. Yes. Oh, I said ge- that GameSpot reviewers are fanboys. Oh, that's probably that's yes. That's actually the best. That, that's probably the best thing. I I love that. I love that Phil was involved yeah. in that. That means and I'm an Xbox fan. I don't mean this as a fanboy. It's always fun for any executive to see that kind of human, right? Like that's mm-hmm. and to me that's very human. You know, anger is a very human response. Of course, that that's that's always nice to see. But again, I will say maybe don't maybe don't title the email that way. <laughs> yeah, maybe don't title it. I, I'm with. I'm not going as far as don't say it at all. You know, you do you. 
Yeah. But let's not title the, the email game spot. The that email. Way. Although, yeah. if they followed our advice, we'd never would have seen this. So I'm glad they didn't. I'm glad they didn't. Yeah. Now, this is when it gets a bit long. Sarah Bond, Xbox vice president, took the stand today as a recording to testify in court concerning the FTC blocking of the Microsoft Activision Blizzard King purchase. We all saw quite a few things come to life. Chief among them, and I think the most interesting thing out of this, arguably the most interesting out of this entire Activision Blizzard discussion since the very beginning, was that Bobby Kodak once threatened to not release Call of Duty on Xbox if the revenue share for their game was not increased. Just to fill in, for those who do not know, the standard revenue share, almost everyone who ships their game on any of the big three platforms has a standard 730 split favoring the developer and publisher of the game. Now, it is not uncommon to have special contracts to have uh, the share smaller at certain points throughout their sales milestones, but this does show Activision was throwing their weight around considerably and making Xbox give them a reason to ship on their platform. Of course, Sarah Bond and Xbox agreed to whatever the new share was. We do not know what that new, new share was. And let me expand before I throw it to you, Ruben. Just because I do want people to understand the revenue share uh, specific part of this development. So if you are a mom and pop game, you're releasing, you know, mom and pop uh, the Dancer 2.5 on Xbox. You're going to get that 730 split. I think they do have a special split at, with specifically ID at Xbox, and they have special incentives for Game Pass and all the things. I'm not talking about that. Just the standard 730 split. You get 70% of the sales, they get 30%. Now, there are certain developers, let's say Ubisoft, you know, the big names, that they'll do cascading shares in a special mm. contract. So they'll say, let's say, like, oh, you know, you'll get, uh, we'll do 80 20 on the first 2 million. Uh, and then we'll do 75, uh, uh, 25 on the first uh, 10 million, you know, and, and you know, you can picture that there's kind of like a ladder uh, milestone to you'll get more of the money uh, with more of the early sales and they'll you'll trickle down as the sales go up pretty much. Right. This is interesting because they came to them and said, we want our shares higher. We're not going to release the game there, which is pretty ballsy saying you're going to give it to us. Now, we don't know technically how the revenue share started. We know 730 split is the most common. I yeah. highly doubt that was exactly how that specific Activision Blizzard thing uh, uh, revenue share was worked out. There is I, I will say with confidence, almost a zero chance that it was straight up a 730 split with no asterisks. There was probably something that means they wanted probably even more of the share than they already probably had with whatever specific contract they had prior. Very interesting. What did you think about this development? Take it however you want with Activision throwing their weight before they were purchased. Uh, maybe PlayStation incentivizing them to do this, saying, hey, maybe you get a little extra if you only ship on PlayStation this year. I don't know. Like, what, what do you think about any of this? I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's PlayStation incentivizing them to, you know, just stay on the PlayStation side. Maybe yeah, there's a, you fine. know, something in the contract. It's like, if you only release this, you get this amount yeah. of, the, you know, so it, it could be but, anything. But at the same time, Xbox knows that Call of Duty is a system seller, I would say. Yeah. Call of Duty sell systems. And I'm sure that there are a lot of people on Xbox that like, oh man, I don't really have, I got all this gamer school point, gamer score over here. I don't really want to start all over on PlayStation. So it's kind of like, yes, it was probably like I said, PlayStation. Like, yeah, just, just stay on X on uh, PlayStation. We don't need to yeah. go to Xbox. But also, Xbox needed something to bring people to their platform. Oh, yeah. And depending on what year this is, this let's say this yeah. was something like 2019 or something. Like, you didn't mm -hmm. got it. You ain't got anything else. So they had yeah. zero options. And that's actually um, it's interesting you bring that up because that is pretty much the argument the FTC brought up because they brought up that she did this and they were like, OK, well, why didn't you say no? The, of course, the argument is, well, I had to because I needed the game. And then the FTC goes, so you need Call of Duty on your platform is what you're saying. Yeah arguing that then you probably shouldn't buy Activision Blizzard because 
right. other people need Xbox or sorry, Call of Duty on their platform, which is yeah. a pretty fascinating argument. As far as I understand, the FTC she was pretty much was that she kind of I sorry to cut you off. I just said oh, she no, kind of good. fell into their their trap. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. It was it was it was a very good argument. As far as I understand, <clears throat> the FTC didn't have a great day in court, but I imagine this was probably the biggest win specifically because. You can literally point to one. It's like, well, there's literally no reason for you not to say no or mm-hmm. sorry to to give them that not, unless you need yeah. it on your platform, which then. Right. You know, now, of course, we add a bunch of asterisks being like, well, PlayStation probably incentivized them to do that. Yes. Or maybe exactly. they didn't. But even if they didn't, they already had marketing agreements with them, which is something the FTC is arguing against Xbox. But. Mm-hmm. But not the other way around, because that's what PlayStation does, which is the like chief example of all these things. So that's when it yeah. gets very murky, and it's clear that the FTC doesn't really understand gaming that much. There was a bunch of different things. There was a bunch of funny questions. I don't know if you saw any of them on Twitter today. There was one where I it's like, saw this morning. do you need a said... Windows key to stream games? And Sarah Bond just went, no. <laughs> like, it was like, what do you... Oh, God. <laughs> there was so it's... many. There were so many little things like that where... I was like, it wow, reminds they really me of, don't understand. It reminds me of when they had the uh, the guy from TikTok, the, the founder of TikTok, going to Congress and them, these yeah. congressmen, congress people just asking him these outrageous questions. So like, you're telling me you know my Wi-Fi name? Yeah. <laughs> uh yes <laughs> it's, uh, yeah yeah <laughs> it was just uh, like oh man I, yeah. I just wish they the FTC needs to like ask the common. I hate to say this, but the common gamer, which mm. I, I'm not a fan of that word. Yeah. I understand, understand it. Yeah, just just to see what their input is. Like, yeah. I think I don't know. I, I I don't trust Xbox when they say like, yeah. Well, why would we pull? Uh, why would we pull Call of Duty from PlayStation when? We need to make the money back. We need to make that sixty-nine billion dollars back. Yeah, but do. at the same time, you need to make the money back. Well, uh, I I forget how much the uh, the um, oh my god, how much they bought You're good. Um, Bethesda. Yeah, uh, it was around eight billion or so. Um, I'm probably missing a point okay. there, but it should have been right. around there. So- Okay, so it's not as as big, but no still, near. still, one would assume like, hey, we, I don't know, it, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, yeah, we're gonna put Call of Duty out on PlayStation, but this new um, Starfield game, yeah, we're not putting that on PlayStation because we need the the exclusive. Uh, it was seven point five billion, so it's okay. Bit off. So not as but, as crazy <clears throat> as six. Nowhere near. Uh, this is actually one of the biggest gaming related acquisitions ever made by like a lot so yeah there's nothing close zynga was was going to be the biggest thing for about a week and then they announced this so uh this this is insane funny that you brought up the jim ryan thing where he uh they bring up like you know you could take it away uh i i do think the uh uh, argument is valid where call of duty is not going anywhere for a while that's why they're so antsy to sign the 10-year deal we're like, mm-hmm. trust us. We're not taking this off the biggest platform ever. Yeah. But. But. Once they have better footing in the market. Zero chance they don't. I think in that 10 year cycle, once they're in a much healthier position, when they got game studios releasing games, Game Pass mm-hmm. is probably close to double the price. They're like, by the way, Call of Duty exclusive on Game Pass. You can only get on Xbox. Peace out, boys. Like, I could definitely yep. see that. Then. And I've been arguing this since they started this. Then you have leverage saying, oh, you want Call of Duty? Oh, we'll give you Game Pass on PlayStation. Mm-hmm. Like, did, just imagine yeah. that argument. Like, yeah. that, is, that is something where you have PlayStation by the figurative balls, if yep. you can hold that. Now, that argument falls apart because in 10 years, we have no idea what's going to happen. We yeah. Right. Activision could lose all of their talent and Call of Duty could suck. We don't know. Mm-hmm. PlayStation yeah. could already have a much better shooter and it sells better. Who knows? But yep. we don't know. So we have to go off like what we know now. And I do think it's very interesting that we do have to theorize like 
would they take it away if they didn't? I really don't think they would. Cause like you said, they have to make the money back. They, they don't right. go. Uh, I thought I am. Um, um, there was a, I was watching the interview of Todd Howard by kind of funny X cast. It's a lot yeah. of words. Yes. And what's interesting was Gary Witta brought up, uh, the the first Star Wars title had a lot of weight on it because the first Star Wars movie didn't cost four hundred million dollars. It cost mm. five billion dollars because we had to buy Star Wars. So like you have a lot of like pressure and you know similar to Starfield now similar to Call of Duty. If this does go through, like yeah no the the first few Call of Duties don't cost two hundred three hundred million dollars. They cost like triple, quadruple that because we have to factor in. We just spent six nine, 69 billion to do all this anyways. So now we have to recoup all that in the back end. Now, this is Microsoft. They piss this money. Let's be honest. Uh, yeah. I, I will say as a reminder, uh, the $7.5 billion, uh, they made that back in the next quarter. That's how much money we're talking about here. Like they made the money back in their next quarter. That is insanity. Yep. So we're not really working with a uh, pure company here. That they, they they have Windows. They have you know it's Microsoft. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're course, a giant, so we can't yes. really compare them to anyone else because like Xbox could lose a billion a year. It would be right. nothing, nothing to them. I just feel like you gotta give a little to get a little. Of you course, know what I'm saying? yeah, I agree. You you should have put my thought is you should have put Starfield on PlayStation. You should have put Starfield on pretty much anything that could run Starfield. They to would show. Uh, I I un completely understand why they didn't. And of course, I, all of them. You know, all kudos to them for not doing it. But you got like I said, you got to give a little to get a little. I so I think they would have if they knew they were buying Activision Blizzard when they announced the game. You're telling me that Phil Spencer didn't think that he was buying Activision? Yeah, as far as I understand, the the purchase plan happened very quickly, which is incredibly, and I'm with you, which is incredibly uncommon. Of course, I'm going off rumors. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. But apparently, they walked up. Uh, Microsoft approached them, which is cra which is crazy to think about. And amidst yeah, the really. giant sexual, is it like you would think? Um, Blizzard was trying to sell around that time because of yeah, their giant the harassment. The giant yeah, harassment. All the more losses. reason for Microsoft to come in and be like, hey, we'll save your ass out. Of, we'll get your agreed. ass out of the fire. No, so that is agreed. That's kind of like two sides of the same coin. So I, I think yeah. I am kind of arguing against myself with that specific line. But um, back to the, the original point, um, they, they, they went to them in a time of crisis to try and bail them out. So mm -hmm. I don't think they had that plan in the back and were like, oh, well, I mean, we already said it's exclusive. We can't change it because that could be viewed as illegal. Like if we, cause like, you know, things like this in discovery come out, it's like, wait, it was exclusive. And then you made it multi-platform. Why did you do that? And it's like, well, you know, you can't say to make us look better. So, and, and there's, well, it's hard to say any of this because anything could be reality. So like, it's yes. hard. It, it, I'm just guessing here. Yeah. Yeah. So, so am I. Sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead. Um, please. You had a point. No, I was just going to say it, it's funny how I, I think Phil Spencer had, like you said, the, 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 those executives, they love their five year. They love oh, their 10 year fans. Love it. I'm pretty sure even if uh, Activision Blizzard didn't have the shit show that is the, their HR stuff oh. happening so much <laughs> they were they were bound to uh acquire somebody whether it be activision blizzard whether it be could have been ea it could have been yeah. any number of people you know I, i'm actually surprised that we haven't heard anything from microsoft saying like hey you know uh oh my god i'm trying to blank on who that that huge company that uh thq is uh, embracer group um, embracer group i'm surprised microsoft hasn't said hey <laughs> if you want to unload some studios come on we'll send you some money they they probably would if they weren't in the middle of this and that yes. also is yeah. they're also one of the contenders that backed out of the deal whatever the embracer group deal was oh they were set for a two billion cash flow 
and that they yeah. left last minute. Who knows who it was? But I mean, okay, okay, okay. Who yeah, has two? But but the but the theory is like, who has two billion? There's only so many people in the game industry who can just blow two billion into somebody. Nintendo, Xbox, maybe oh, you think it was EA. Games related. I don't think it was it games could, related. It could. I thought it, it could have been Saudi Arabia. It, that's that, that's a good money. point. It could have been the public yeah. investment fund, which is yep. that's gross, but it could have been. Um, it could have yeah. been so many people. So like, it's really hard to guess. That's why I only really stick to gaming and like trying to theorize right. crazy right, examples. Because right, right, right. that my, for some reason my immediate thought was Nintendo. I really don't know why, but I was like maybe Nintendo to get like some sort of investment back, and maybe this is like in good faith or something. I, I don't know, but I I have no idea who did that, and also like shocking that they backed out like. In literally the eleventh hour, like he, that yeah. guy was notified the night of, and woke up yep. and went, "What?" <laughs> yeah. So, that's pretty great. shocking. Yeah. Ah, oh, great conversation. Thank you for coming on, Ruben. Yeah, no problem. Another matter broached was the limited marketing rights they had to advertise Call of Duty coming to Xbox. This is an even more common marketing strategy, and it's something PlayStation has done a lot of in the past decade. Things like Xbox couldn't outright say the game was coming to the Xbox on anything other than official Xbox sources. So, for instance, uh, Sarah Bond specifically brought up, it's like, well, we had a showcase and we wanted to make a giant list of all the games coming to Xbox. They could not put Call of Duty on there because of that specific licensing um agreement <clears throat> sorry marketing agreement that a, a call of duty slash activision had with playstation mm. that they pretty much wouldn't advertise going to any other platform but of course they would still launch on those other platforms right. which is something like i said increasingly more common with playstation xbox does this but a much smaller degree to the point where they have uh we saw this with the showcase they do this a lot where the game's announced, but they can't say it comes to any platforms for it seems like 48 hours. Sometimes it's like a weekish, And then yep. they're like, oh, we're coming to everything else, by the way. Uh, I don't really have too much to add to this, Ruben, aside from play. this is kind of PlayStation's demo. They love locking down things. We see that with Final Fantasy 16 right now to an even more degree where they're grabbing the entire game from the other platform uh, and and just paying them straight out to only launch on PlayStation. Did you have anything to add here? I would just say in the words of Phil Spencer and the gaming leadership team, pettiness from Sony. <laughs> Take a big old sip of water about spit it all out. That was very funny. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, th that's uh, to be expected. It's Sony. Like, like we said before, Call of Duty sells a crap ton of yeah. PlayStations. PlayStation is the place to be when you want to play a, a Call of Duty um yeah I, i'm not surprised by that at all and we'll be going back to the console share in a bit uh quote unquote him the xbox losing the console wars very interesting discussion there to have in a second sarah also had to confirm that there was no way currently to bring call of duty to switch as sony and nintendo are both quote or sorry are quote both competitors and partners end quote uh pretty much their line of questioning was could Call of Duty go anywhere else other than the main platforms right now? Uh, she said no, because there's just it's not a way for that to happen. They have no incentive to launch on Switch because <clears throat> they have PlayStation to appease with, you know, all the marketing rights and exclusivity ish kind of things that they have. So also, why would they do that? Switch isn't and, powerful enough. And there you go. There's another reason why it hasn't launched there because it can't run on Switch. But of course, that's not the line of questioning that she wanted to do there. That was right, their right, side right. questioning her. So she was like, "Oh, you know, it can't currently go there now. So we're doing it, but you know, because we're good people." Nintendo, <laughs> but also, Nintendo doesn't have the online capabilities of running yeah, so a this, huge game that is Call of Duty. Multiple reasons why Call of Duty isn't on there, but of course, yeah. they want to try and spin it positively in their favor that they're of course only doing it for the good of their heart and of course switch will go 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 everywhere right else. of course um, of course but uh i did find that interesting that that they did bring that up specifically where it's like you know try to justify everyone else you know look we're bringing it other places Inter very interesting to say at least i guess i can't wait to see that first call of duty oh of if this switch. goes through and we have to see call of duty looking like a potato on a switch oh my it would god just have to be i'm assuming like Technically, Call of Duty campaign is is a Call of Duty, right? Yeah, yeah, and so, they could bring it. Uh, so what I assume they would do is is make cloud versions and yeah. sell it that way. Which, in yeah. theory, 
might it might not look that bad, especially if we're only counting to the new Switch, because by the time they get, you know, time to release a Call of Duty on the Switch, it's probably on the new system anyways. So eh, you might be years. able to squeeze out a little more. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Two years. I, I, I'm, I'm saying, you know, they are on that two year cycle of uh, is it two years? I who think. is well, I, I'm, I'm Just, who Call is? of Duty? Call, Call of Duty is every year. The, the, yeah, but the the three teams have I think two years to make the game. Oh, the three the, the well, I the guess you can't shooters. really say that right now. Technically, the th- the three teams had three years each, but that's a little more messy now because um, right because Sledgehammer. Oh my God, yep. who was it? Yeah, Sledgehammer. Ark and Slammer. Yeah, completely imploded, and they like yep. apparently scrapped their entire game, which is like, yeah. which is kind of the first example of them failing, which is kind of impressive. It could like also 20. be they needed more time to. <laughs> this is the Call of Duty that's coming out this year. Yeah, gets that's a good point. Yeah, there's yeah, that's very very complicated, especially when you have to really think about the mm-hmm. machine that is Call of Duty of like. Once one cog is broken, that can send yeah. all the other ones like spiraling out and uncontrollably. A quick story to come out. Pete Hines took the stand. Of course, he is senior vice president of marketing for Bethesda Softworks. Stated that the upcoming machine games title Indiana Jones was originally going to be multi-platform, but post acquisition by Microsoft, they moved to focus on PC and Xbox as quote, you're dealing with a licensor who is giving a ton of feedback on what you're making. It's going to add a ton of time to your scheduling. These agreements, you don't get to take as long as you want. You have a window of time in which you're going to release a game. You immediately have a clock that's ticking on you. Truthfully, we also kind of like the idea of embracing, bringing it to game pass and how many players we could get there. End quote. Don't know if I completely agree with everything there, but of course I think he is, He's telling the truth, probably, but I think he's stretching a little bit. I think they were in heavily incentivized to bring uh, all of their games in-house to Xbox. Yeah. Could be wrong there, but I highly doubt that they really cared about making it for the platforms. And it was probably honestly nice because they can only focus on two versions. They have to make sure mm-hmm. it works on a PC and an Xbox. So I imagine it was probably kind of nice when they were bought. It's like, oh, thank God we can. We can make half the amount of titles, pretty much. Like, exactly. we just focus on an Xbox and PC. Thank God. So now we move over to Matt Booty. Now, this was so interesting. I didn't want to do a write-up because it would be kind of stealing too much from the article, and I never want to do that. So we're going to be reading a little bit from Rebecca Valentine's article over on IGN. Microsoft admits Xbox has lost the console wars. So... There's a couple of things here we're going to <clears throat> talk about. Of course, I don't read the entire article because I want you to go read it. We're only going to be reading a full snippets here. So make sure you go give them a click. This is the first quote I want to read. Quote, Xbox consoles have... Consi- oh, and of course, this is Matt Booty. I apologize. This is him taking the stand. This is one of his snippets from a article. Quote, Xbox's console has consistently ranked third of three behind PlayStation and Nintendo in sales. In 2021, Xbox had a share of 16%, while Nintendo and PlayStation had shares of redacted and redacted. Respectively, likewise, for console revenues and share of consoles currently in the use by gamers install base, Xbox trails with 21%, while PlayStation and Xbox have shares of redacted and redacted, respectively. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this supports the argument later on that Matt Booty pretty much has a whole thing that says like they have lost consequences because of these specific situations. I want to ask you this now. I always knew that uh, Xbox was quite behind, uh, sixteen percent of the market surprised. share, and and with an install pace of twenty one percent compared to the other players. And you have to imagine that the pie is probably much more closer from Nintendo to PlayStation than they are to Xbox in both categories. So we are mm-hmm. talking far, far, far behind. Because we're, we're, yeah. we're sp- if I had to guess here, we're probably talking like a 38 to like maybe low 40s-ish favoring PlayStation around there, which means they are being walloped in in an incredible degree and there was always rumors that they were being outsold three to one they've never talked about xbox systems really since the 360 uh so it's probably true 
they're probably very close to being outsold three to one via PlayStation, yeah. which is quite shocking to say the least. Is it though? The, the, like they haven't like you said they haven't released the numbers of how many consoles have been sold for a while now uh i think this is what happens when you're like the the last person to the race you end up this far behind agreed but they were such in a strong position with 360 this really shows how important that transition was because yes. they felt they fell behind so much to the degree that it might I'm not going to say impossible. Nothing really is impossible really ever in life, but they have fell behind so much that they are, they are bare. They're barely in the double digits. <laughs> like 16% so is some um, is, is an incredible. And that goes to show you that the PC play to make Xbox games on PC might've been out of pure survival, just yeah. a need for that game to happen pass. versus PlayStation yeah. and all those things doing it kind of by choice. Game Pass in and of itself is the reason why, like, this is the reason why Game Pass exists. Because oh, yes. So far yeah. behind. Yeah. No, I, that's a, and that's a, a great point to bring up, too. And to remind everyone, yeah, they've pretty much said and Phil Spencer, I believe himself said, we're trying to get people with content now because we can't yeah. get them. We've lost the library. We lost Xbox mm -hmm. One. We lost Every single purchase from 2013 on is gone if you left Xbox. So now yep. you you're not only on a PlayStation, but you have history there. You have your you have your fifth Call of Duty that you bought. You have your random skate game, you know, whatever insert whatever game you that you buy. You have friends there. You yeah, have you got your friends. You got yeah. You got that. Ignoring the purchases, yeah, you have friends. You got tro you know. There's a you have a, a account there, and mm -hmm. it makes it less and less likely the more we go on that someone would leave. Yeah. I'm right. reminded of um particularly my situation where like let's say I sell my Xbox tomorrow and only play on PlayStation. That that would mean I would lose if I had to guess 200 games. That's 200 purchases over my entire lifetime of having my Xbox from 2007 I think is when I got it or something. I don't remember when I got it. <clears throat> I, I could check I'd... my account. <clears throat> my first console was the Xbox 360. Um, so then, my my, what do you what do you say your first console like the first one like, you played? No, I mean like the first one I was able to buy for myself. Like before that, I was just a Nintendo kid that had just DS and all handheld. So I, I didn't had... technically buy a system until PS4 because I always got one for my birthday or what right, more right, commonly right. happened was my dad would give me his when he would right. upgrade or something. Mm -hmm. So that was actually more common, but it took me a very long time to actually buy with my own money. Cause I would always just, I would usually get a hand me down or something for right. Christmas or something. I remember getting my Xbox one specifically. And, and I told them, I was like the year I was coming up cause it was $500. I was like, yeah, don't give me anything for my birthday, please. Like, just this for christmas that's it and i was like don't get anything else and and i remember my dad saying this you're like you know that's half a thousand dollars and i was like yep but can you do it i was like but, <laughs> but can you get it for me? so i they ended up getting it for me but i i'll never forget that that was a great great time although of course the xbox one was awful at launch it, it got much yes. better um i also bought the xbox one at launch Mm. and i bought it with my own money i was very surprised i had to well when i say my own money i took out a credit card and i ah. bought it yes and technically slippery your money slope. kind of <laughs> slippery slope because i'm very. still paying that xbox one off right now <laughs> um but yeah but what i mean essentially my xbox 360 was the first like actual console yeah. that i owned like I said before, I would always, I had Nintendo, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy SP, um, Nintendo I DS. Those. Yeah, I had, all, yeah, those. I had yeah. all of those, but my parents were strictly firm on, no, you're not getting a console because you need to focus on school. Mm, yeah. Yeah. There my it is. My parents were both teachers. So. Oh, you know, wow. Like, well, we there know it what is. To do. Yeah, yeah, we know what's going on. So, no. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I, this is what happens. Like I said before, this is what happens when you're, you decide 
to start the race when uh, Nintendo and X uh, Nintendo and PlayStation are like three quarters of the way into the race. Yeah, you know, they've learned, they've grown, they have like what's what's probably the most interesting is they have knowledge, which is something you can't really buy unless you poach people, and that's not mm-hmm. you know you don't really gain it that way either. This is going all the way back and before even xbox was made like their approach was just let's just buy stuff and just hope for the best and that's kind of what microsoft's just been doing ever since they've entered the console market is just let's buy stuff and just hope for the best that's yeah. you know they tried to i mean going all the way back they they i mean halo's not even theirs they technically bought that too so it's just it's so complicated when you're specifically talking about uh xbox and how deep their methodology is of like just buying and and the just how much 2013 was in just a complete disaster for yeah. e- just everyone involved. It e- just, I just, everyone involved in Xbox just completely just fell apart. Don Matrick just sent the ship to die. Yep. I just think of when everybody's, whenever someone mentions 2013 to me, the, the first thing that pops into my head is Sony's. This is how we share this games. This is how we share games. Step one. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And then yeah. That's oh, the I never, only thing that pops forget. up. Never forget, never forget seeing forget. that E3. Oh, yep. I, I, I was so, it was so defeatist too to be an Xbox fan. I was so yeah. sad. I was like, oh my God. Like, why, why does it suck here? And then I almost bought it. And they, they, what's always funny is they, they walked back their DMCA thing, but like, they didn't really. Like, it's, everyone still kind of does DMCA just in a different yeah. way than what was described. Yeah. Even PlayStation, it's not did as when bad. They launched. It's just not as, yeah, like you said, it's not as bad. It's not quite as strict. And they did this weird thing where they were pretty much like, we're going to put put games, uh, GameStop out of business was pretty much their model was like, yeah, we're going to put them out of business because we're tired of sharing our money with them. Okay, well, as we leave this, do you have any like leaving glance out of this entire discussion before we move on to Uh, a couple other news stories? What do you think is going to happen with the FTC? Do you think that Microsoft's going to win? Apparently, we're we're not even asking if they're winning. It's if they get a preliminary injunction, apparently ruins the deal because they don't hit the 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 deadline. Now, oh. I don't understand why they couldn't extend the deadline. I'm not a lawyer, so I I don't know if right. that's not allowed or you have to it's make a new deal. Or, yeah, so, yeah. but I I when they say they if the deal goes through if the deadline's not met. I'm like, well, can't, can't you? Which I guess you can't because no one's made the argument why they won't just do that. So I just assume you can't. Um, so that's just that's that's the game they're playing. If they get the preliminary, if they are they get the preliminary injunction from the SDC, that's done. So razor thin. The FTC, I think, is a lot of show right now. Mm-hmm. They're just kind of showing that they're they're right. kind of squeezing them. I do not think they're going to get much substance out of this. Uh, the CMA was a good example of the, someone actually saying no when everyone would say they would say yes. Mm-hmm. So I don't really, I'm not really behind a lot of people who are out there giving their like thoughts and like what's going to happen because they've been wrong a lot. So I've just kind of been going off what I think. And what I think is I do not think the FTC will do the preliminary injunction. I think they're just going to let it happen and just, they made their case. It's clear they don't really know what they're talking about. It's clear that Jim Ryan didn't care enough to go there. So he, so it's not a winning enough battle from them because he just made a video and sent it to them. Mm-hmm. So to me, that's that said a lot because they don't see it. They don't see a winning avenue from them. So they didn't even show up really. Like that's that's the equivalent of 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 sending an email. <laughs> like you know, like I think for, it's for a trial hearing. For Sony's part, I think it's like it's the, it's a lost case. We'll just I'll send That's, a video. I and what's funny is I don't know if you saw this today. Jim Ryan, his a uh, couple of his leaked emails came out and was like, we don't. They'd never expected at one point that Microsoft wouldn't actually launch it on their platform. They yeah, knew I they always that. would, yeah. which is hilarious. And again, I'm not a legal guy, but wasn't wouldn't that technically be lying? And isn't that against the law? I don't. Again, not was he not a legal guy. Question. But uh, but I found that interesting too. And 
that to me is the most telling thing that they didn't even show up because they they flew Jim Ryan to Brussels mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> when they did the uh, CMA hearing, but they didn't this time. And that's closer. So I don't think I think they they know it's it's a lost cause. And they're like, we delayed it long enough. That's going to go through. They're probably yeah. pretty positive. It will. They're going to move on mm -hmm. and focus on them, probably. Yep. <coughs> All right. This is a little thing. I don't think it really affects us much. Uh, EA announced that they're going to be splitting pretty much two avenues of their organizations. Uh, and they're going to be 